Welcome to our podcast, Coffee and the Six Fs, brought to you by CrossFit Camrose. We are a health and wellness podcast that wants to change the perspective away from only treating individual aspects of the human and expecting them to live healthy and fulfilled lives as a byproduct. We aim to do this by inventing experts in the categories of the six Fs, fitness, family, freedom, future, finances, and faith. We also believe that one of the most impactful things a person can do for someone is to share their own personal stories in the effort to help others. So we'll also do that for you. I'm your host, Matthew Chouinard, and I look forward to sharing this time with you. Enjoy. All right. Welcome to our first episode of Coffee in the Six Fs. You'll notice in the show, I refer to it as the second episode, but I decided to hold off on the first one and I'll redo that one for you guys. It was just me talking about myself and I think um, you guys want to hear Jaleesa's story first because it's it's awesome. Um, I'm a little biased seeing as I am her husband, but it is has been super impactful for us and others around her and she's utilized it to help those people around her and um um yeah and that's the goal of it all right to for us to be able to share our stories and as a byproduct help those around us like i said in the intro so if you find this beneficial for yourself please let us know or if you think someone close to you would um benefit from this, please send it to them. And we hope that we can help you. Jaleesa is going to be talking about her journey. I refer to it as adventure, right? So I like kind of flipping it to that way. Um, Her adventure, her journey through exercise addiction and an eating disorder and how it affected a lot of her life, affected our marriage, affected pretty much everything around her. And we talked about how This show is about the six F's, right? You have to be holistically well to be healthy. And there's a couple aspects in this where she was lopsided, her words, not mine. um, And that affected the whole flywheel, if you will, of the six F's. So enjoy. We'll talk to you soon. Now we're starting. Hey. Hi, Jaleesa. (laughs) Hi. How are you doing? Good. Good. So you are our first guest on Coffee and the Six Fs. Are you I excited? I am very honored. Um, for the listeners out there, we're learning. We are just got this new podcast set up, and we're excited to use it and learn. Um, but I'm going to introduce Julius a little bit. I know her pretty well, <laughs> I guess you could say, as <laughs> she is my wife. Um, she has a lot of job titles. She's a registered nurse. She is a coach at the gym. She's manager of the nutrition program and nutrition coach. She is part of the media team and communications. So that's a lot. Um, A lot of things going on. She's a dog mom. (laughs) That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. I don't like that, but also I really like him. So yeah. Um, She's a very good writer, a blogger, which... Stay tuned for more on that. Oh, don't tell my secrets. <laughs> uh. <laughs> She's going to start writing some more blogs. Uh, she used to write for the local paper and people loved it. So she's going to bring that online to share some of the stories <laughs> she's going to be doing <laughs> today. Um, millennial now. So that's what you do, Julie. So if you, um, let's kind of dive into, uh, if you had to explain yourself. Or oh, no. Yeah, go for it. No, this literally was a conversation that I had with a client this morning. And whenever I have this client, we talk for like five minutes about nutrition and then it's about life stuff. And we were talking about this exact thing about like how um, when your job roles change, how when you, when someone asks you what you do and then you don't know how to answer and then it's you realize how much worth or how much identity you put into what you do instead of who you are Mm -hmm. um (laughs) and she's like i challenge you the next time somebody asks you about you that you don't say a single thing (laughs) about 
your jobs. <laughs> I was like, I don't actually know what I would say. So I don't actually know what your question was anymore, but. Well, I think it's basically <laughs> what you just said. Like, how would you, if you had to int- introduce yourself um, without telling them that you have a dog or without telling them <laughs> what you do for a living? I don't think I would start with, I'm Jaleesa, I have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> you Maybe. never know. Um, okay. I, good thing she asked me that this morning because I actually thought about it a little bit, but <clears throat> I guess if we're not using specific titles, I would just say I'm a person that cares for other people mm-hmm. in a lot of different ways, um, professionally and I think relationally, if that's a word, but I don't know. So I don't know. I just think like mm, that is one of my giftings. Uh, that I've chosen to use both professionally and I think that uh, it's a gift, mm-hmm. maybe. Yep. Yeah, I'm super humble too, so <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's my good. gift. Yeah, fabulous. Uh-huh. Um, so mm-hmm. on the show, before we get started into Julissa's story, we talk a little bit about coffee. And it's mostly oh, yeah. kind of just selfish because Important we part. both like coffee, so we thought... What better excuse to drink coffee than on a podcast as well? Um, You can't just call a podcast the six Fs. No, it has to be coffee and the six Fs. So today we're drinking... We're drinking our first iced coffee of 2020. Yeah, it's like plus five outside, which is awesome. Um, From Goat Coffee. I actually don't know what blend it is, but... Either Cherry Hill or Cooking Horse, I'm assuming. I think it's Cherry Hill. That's their standard, I think. Um, Why do you like drinking coffee? Um, why? The hard questions. I just feel like that's. Is it the why taste? Why do you not? Or like is it the feeling around it? Or is it the activity around it? Uh, all of the above. You there can't you have go. one without the other. Okay. So if you, and just so that listeners know, we are not experts in tasting coffee, but if you could explain no, this uh, coffee. Okay. My order is uh, an iced Americano, light on ice. With a good splash of cream. <sighs> and it tastes just like that. <laughs> like, cool. <laughs> I think we'll get better at this as we go along, the more coffees tastes you like drink. Good. It tastes like spring and life and happiness in one sip. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's kind of dive right into it. Okay. So today we're going to be talking about a little bit about Jaleesa's story, um, her adventure, we'll call it. Uh, I guess it was six, six, mm-hmm. seven years ago. Not that how about, long. How about I let you tell it? Go ahead for it. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Um, okay, well, I probably should be more specific about what we're talking about in my story. Um, this is not like on January 15th, 1991, I was born. Not talking about that story. Um, talking about... My struggle with an eating disorder and exercise addiction. Um, So, I don't know how long. I guess it would have been 2010-ish when I was in nursing school. And that was kind of the beginning of when everything sort of started. Um, (coughs) Not to blame Matt, but the real reason it started (laughs) was... Uh, we got engaged and uh, I think that was like the initial trigger for me um, when things started happening but when I can look back now I realize it's a lot more than that I think that was just kind of the last thing that pushed me over the edge Um, so yeah uh, 2010 can you explain (laughs) no I'm getting there okay I'm gonna backtrack sounds good (laughs) I was going to, like, push you over the edge. and Matt, it's Matt's Matt. fault. And push, <laughs> Matt, push me over the edge. Okay, I'll continue. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, so I was in living in Edmonton. I, funny story, I lived with Matt's brother and his brother's friend. Um, so I was, like, not that I was alone, but I wouldn't exactly say I had a core group of friends. So I was kind of isolated. I literally did nursing school related things from the second I woke up till the second I went to bed. I am a little bit type A and 
um, when I do something, I want to do it really well. So I was pretty driven um, to do well in school, and it's uh, nursing school is pretty challenging. So um, I was fairly consumed by that. Um, I also had this fear of gaining freshman 15 um, or 20 or 30 or anything, really. I also had quit playing soccer uh, to go to school, so I was basically just going to the gym a little bit here and there, and then, yeah, like I said, um, then I got engaged, and for whatever reason, I, I don't know, but I just had, like, this inner dialogue with myself saying that (coughs) I needed to look a certain way for a wedding and I think that's a pretty common thing um but it was like all I could think about and I like to think that I'm not super influenced by media and um I don't know magazines all that stuff but I clearly was so um Things started to change pretty drastically um, after that time. Uh, Matt lived in Saskatchewan at the time, so he didn't really know what was going on in the beginning. Um, But I actually remember, like, the first meal that I remember sitting at the table, and I was actually eating, I was eating chili (laughs) at your parents' house. (laughs) I don't think you know the story. Eating chili at your parents' house there was a family gathering, you were not there, because you were in Saskatchewan, and I remember thinking, I'm still hungry, but I'm going to stop eating, because I want to be skinny, and that was, like, the first moment that I remember having thoughts of controlling my eating beyond, like, just what was healthy, um, so after that, um, I was also very uh, money conscious, conscience, conscious. <laughs> yeah, you got right the first time you got it. <laughs> and um, it also became a way for me to save on groceries. Um, so I had it in my head that I didn't want to have student loans when we got married. So I basically um, wouldn't eat really anything until I would go home on the weekends and then I'd be so hungry that I would eat on the weekend when I went home and so my mom and dad probably didn't really know what was going on in the beginning because all they saw was what I would do when I came home on the weekends and to them that probably looked normal and then they would send me home or back to Edmonton with food and I would not buy anything else I would just live on whatever they sent me home with Um, so in my mind, I was like doing a great job at a being skinny and B saving money. So it was like, (laughs) I thought I was winning (laughs) and, uh, um, yeah, it just started spiraling and I would wake up at like four 30 to catch the bus to get to the school. So I could work out for two hours before classes started at eight, which is outrageous now that I think of it um and then go to school all day take the bus home do homework and go to bed and do it all over again and that went on for well until I finished school and then in the meantime we got married and we lived one more year in Edmonton while I was at school and that's when things kind of started to uh unravel is that a fair word you mean for yourself? Well, like, yeah. yeah. Like, that was the first time that anyone had ever actually, like, called me out on what I was doing. Because up until that time, besides your brother and his friend, um, nobody really knew the true me or what my habits were or how controlling I had become um, with food and with exercise. And there were moments in that first year when we were married where I was like, oh, this was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> not the not eating, but the married part. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> because not that I didn't love you. It was just like, I'm so mad at this other human who is telling me what I should and shouldn't do, even though I knew he was right. Uh, and that was like 
super hard, a real hard way to start a marriage. Highly would not recommend that. And even when you say telling you <coughs> to do and what not to do is mostly like, hey, can we, we could take a day off so we can go out to eat yeah, together? Yeah, it wasn't, you <laughs> weren't even like, you weren't even like mean about it. It was just like, hey, um, can we like eat the same supper for once? Or like, can we not work out every single day of the week and maybe just like, sleep in and enjoy anything yeah and i remember like the one of the like most profound moments i can remember is like living in that dingy apartment in edmonton and i woke up at some ungodly hour to do to do p90x in our living room before we went to church and i had like gotten away with that for forever it felt like and then for some reason you woke up that morning and you were like hey like let's just have breakfast together instead or something like that and I like literally had an anxiety attack and I remember like bawling and like I physically felt ill because you asked me not to work out Mm -hmm. and I was like I think it was like a mix of rage and anger towards you for like questioning me and what I wanted to do and then like worrying like physically worrying that if I didn't work out that morning that I would gain weight or something or Mm -hmm. like by not working out then I would actually like feel my hunger pains and I would want to eat and that's like such a scary feeling for well it was for me well it's such a (coughs) dangerous disease in the sense that you actually feel like you told me if you miss a day just now you said that you gain yeah, I, even in your mind, you probably think you'd gain like ten pounds or whatever else, like you gain it all back instantly, right? Oh yeah, like and that that just became like such an obsession. Like I would weigh myself. Oh, it was so bad. I would weigh myself. There was a at the gym that I went to at school. There was a scale like as you went into the gym, and I would weigh myself before I worked out, and then I'd weigh myself after I worked out too mm-hmm. to see like if I lost anything while in the, in the two hours that I was working <laughs> out. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I always remember, like, seeing the numbers and then, like, mm, mm, during the week while I was at school, I was always, like, l- every day I would lose weight and then I'd go home on the weekend and then I'd come back on Monday and be, like, two pounds heavier and then I would be mad because I ate, I ate on the weekends when I was at home. <coughs> and so then it was, like, the whole week would just be, like, a battle to lose that two pounds or whatever and lose more and that yeah that, when I think about it now it's like oh, <laughs> I was so sick <laughs> but I mean it is just like any other addiction like and when you're in it you have or you feel like you have no control or it's not even like it's not it doesn't become a choice anymore it's just what you do it's just like this is what I do and if anything or anyone tries to get in the way of it, oh, look out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yes. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So you touched on the eating part a little bit, I guess. Uh, tell us a little bit more about the exercise addiction itself. Like, can you talk into that a bit? Because I think that's something that is, it's hard to say it's wrong, right? How yeah. can something good <laughs> yep. be not when it's taken to the extreme, yeah. be not okay because obviously it affected other aspects of your life. And mm-hmm. we're talking about the six Fs, right? So yeah. family, faith, fitness, future, finances, and free- freedom. Whoa, I good get for it. you. Oh, yeah. You nailed that. Um, so obviously it affected a lot of those other things. Yeah. Even if you just think of finances, mm-hmm. right? Like you literally didn't eat food so yeah. you could pay off your loans. Which we did. hey Yeah, that Don't was Don't awesome. recommend that. Yeah. <laughs> So talk a bit about that if you... Okay, like the exercise specific part? Yeah. Um, like how mm, how like difficult is it to... I feel tired thinking to, about it. Yeah, how difficult <laughs> is it to... Well, I guess for me, right? Like for me to say, hey, I feel like this is too much. But how can, yeah. I, how can I tell you that if exercise is something good? Yeah, so like it became an idol... So it was like, it doesn't matter who tells me it's too much or, or like, 
I could just reason my way out of it because it's like, well, no, yeah, I know you're supposed to take a rest day or whatever, but it makes me feel good and it's a stress reliever and like school is super stressful and you know and I would even use like oh it's my time with God like when I go out for a run I'll pray or um it's how I like clear my mind and so like I I remember many times I mean like it like take a rest day or why do you need to go to the gym on a Sunday and I just had every excuse in the book like well yeah, it's the only thing that I really helps me de-stress from school or, um, like, I sit all day at a desk doing school, so I want to be active because it's good for me or, like, you know, all those typical things that make sense if you do it in a healthy way, but when it becomes an obsession or an addiction, then it's, like, just as an excuse to keep doing it, even though deep down I knew it was wrong, but I couldn't. I couldn't get there with my mind. Like it just had so much control over me. Mm -hmm. So I became, and I know you can attest to this and we've had many discussions about this, but I became like extremely manipulative about it because I would lie uh, in order to be able to do it. Like even say, Oh, I'm going to the grocery store and take my running shoes and go for a run and come back with groceries. Like, surprise <laughs> yeah um i carried the groceries really far that's why i'm sweating <laughs> uh no uh yeah and so it definitely well i guess <coughs> it's it's hard for someone to say that it's wrong if like obviously yeah. i don't want you to be stressed so I'm like, i can't really say anything right? yeah like, and, you, and I if know. i did say something that turns it into hey you're not allowed to say that because i don't want to be stressed yeah and i know that like many times you have said like you make me feel like I'm crazy because I feel like the things I'm saying are common sense or like I'm just you just wanted to take care of me or like protect me but I had every answer in the book to come at you with like no this is why I'm doing it and then and I know you questioned yourself so many times of like okay am I am I the crazy one or like is this okay and I know you knew it wasn't but I think it just went on for so long and you got, well, you got a little bit sick of my, well, I guess my how and uh, everything. <laughs> yeah. You like, how did you know? Like when was the moment you're like, Oh, mm. I'm sick. Oh yeah. Um, Cause you talked about the moments you kn knew that you wanted to started, stop eating. Yeah. I can but what like, about when you're like, Oh, this isn't good. Um, I tried to give blood once and I like the, you have to get your blood pressure taken, I think before you give blood. I don't know, actually I haven't done it since, but the nurse that did it was like, I think my blood pressure was like 70 on 40 and she just like looked at me and was like, um, uh, we can't, we can't do this today. And I was like, oh, why? She's like, you, you don't have enough blood pressure for this to even work. Like do you feel okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. Because that was just like how I was used to functioning, I guess. Well, I wasn't really functioning, but. And then she was like, I think you should make an appointment with your doctor because I don't think this is normal. And in my head, I was just like, no, this is normal for me. It's because I don't eat and because I exercise. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and But she was like obviously concerned. And so then I went and I made an appointment with my doctor. And... <coughs> Yeah, sure enough, like, my heart was not functioning the way it should anymore, and um, like, he sent me for a bunch of tests, which basically came back normal, but just showing that, like, my body was trying to preserve itself, basically, so my blood pressure was, like, in my boots, and my pulse was super low and like my hair started falling out and I was cold all the time. And then it was just like, okay, like I knew at that time it had gotten out of hand. And I think I knew I was sick before that, but that was the first time where it was like, Oh, oh like, dang it. I can talk for a little bit here to give you, Julissa never cries. Julissa <laughs> <you guys> know. <laughs> 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 no, it was 
was like, that was the first time. And I was like, I have to make a choice of like, do I want to hold on to this or do I want to live? And I never really thought it would get to that point, but it's such a sickening disease where it was like, for a while there, I wasn't actually sure, like, I didn't know the answer to that, like, I thought, I had the thought of like, no, I would actually rather die than give this up, because it had so much control over me, and that's when like, I mean, a lot of things kind of helped me turn the corner, but I think that's when I realized the damage that I had started doing to my body, and when I mean, I also was not stupid. Like, I knew I could see it and I could feel it and I knew that um, things weren't functioning the way they were supposed to. So I think it was then and uh, a couple of things that people had said to me were just like, okay, this is, this is serious now and it's not just like, I'm not just talking about losing five pounds for my wedding. This is like, okay, like... Well, you had to get your dress adjusted. How many? Uh, yeah, that was awful. But bless my seamstress's heart. <laughs> <laughs> Fixed my dress like seventeen times. I'm pretty sure. Uh, but yeah, I think it was like that. At that point, that I was like, okay, I really started actually thinking about whether or not this was something I wanted to continue to hold on to, or if I actually wanted to, like, live, not even a normal life, but just live in general, and, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think things like that are, are tough, because no matter how much I would point things out, or no matter how much I would try to help guide you to being a little healthier, it's really that person, like, your, your choice, Right, like even when I was CrossFitting, and deep down, I'm sure you liked the idea of CrossFit. No, I hated the <laughs> idea of CrossFit because it was somebody else telling me what exactly, to do. Exactly, but like that <laughs> CrossFit itself, right? Like until you chose to do it yourself. Oh yeah, I hated it. Right, it was my decision. Yeah, yeah, and I think <laughs> that's the thing too is most of the time, some, something when someone has something like this going on, either something really impactful happens like that yeah. or they take the time to self-analyze and be like oh like take an outside perspective view and say no I need to change this and I think it's really hard when we just expect that we can that was like me saying it was me that made you better isn't true it was yeah it was no. your decision I was there to help right but yeah um, you were like uh, I mean like you were a big factor in it in that I knew that I still wanted to live a life with you, but there were so many times where this sounds so bad, but like that was not enough to make me choose to eat or make me choose to not work out or go for a run or whatever it was. Right, because that a, a feeling of control yeah. was what you wanted, right? Yeah, and uh, it didn't matter whether it was like thinking about you or my family or anything else, it was just like, I wanted both. I wanted to, I still wanted to be with you and I still wanted to live, but I was a lot, for a long time, I wasn't ready to give up everything else too. Mm -hmm. I think too, like a big part of the puzzle for when I started to actually consider recovery was when I... Like, when I graduated and actually started working at the hospital, I realized that, like, I had to be able to think straight because other people's lives were in my hands then. And that scared me enough to, like, get me to at least start eating when I was at work or, like, when I would prepare for work. And then I realized, like, when you work 7 to 7, whether it's 7 a.m. or 7 p.m., you can't wake up at four in the morning to work out for two hours and then go to work for 12 hours and be safe to practice. Mm -hmm. And so I think that play, that was like 
a big part of it. And then this sounds so cliche, but like the gym obviously has been like a lifesaver just because I don't know when you have when you have a community of people that like empower you to be strong and capable instead of like that I don't think it's really like really that popular anymore but it used to be like everybody just wanted to be skinny and that's not really we don't praise that here like we don't, not that we praise any body type but it's just like you you want to be better everybody else want everybody just makes healthier, you want right? yeah better. everybody here makes you want to be the best you that you can be and it's just like okay if we're gonna do this and this is like i'm gonna be associated with crossfit cameras i need to like actually act the part and i knew that that meant like fueling my body properly and maybe lifting a barbell <laughs> instead of running for hours <laughs> every day mm -hmm. and like yeah i know i can see looking back now that it's pretty cool because I know that th that was all a part of God's plan for how he wanted to use me in like what I do now and how I can share my story and like don't get me wrong I know that not everybody comes out of it the way that I do and especially <laughs> not everybody that has an eating disorder and exercise addiction then become nutrition coaches and CrossFit coaches because that feels like very ironic but I I, I can see it now and like I wouldn't be the person or the coach that I am today had I not gone through that because I think one of the biggest things in being a successful coach is being able to emphasize empathize with your clients and maybe they haven't gone through the same things as me but it's it's all the same in the end it's about being your healthiest and I wouldn't I mean I wouldn't want to go through it again but I'm thankful for the things I've learned from it I don't actually know what question you asked me, but that's what came out. Nope. So <laughs> just keep going. This is great. Uh huh. Um, just to kind of go back a little bit, you said you had a moment where you kind of realized, like, "Oh, I'm sick." Right? Yeah. Um, for people listening, how would you, like, if they have a feeling that this is them? I know it's a hard question, a hard thing. Like, yeah. what, what, what do they do? Oh, this is, I actually was hoping you wouldn't ask me this. That's because good. No, um, that's a like, good question. No, there's like no good answer because everybody's different. And <coughs> this is like unfortunate, but we don't have a ton of great resources around here. Like I know you can find them in like the bigger centers, but it's hard to kind of figure out what the right step is for everybody. And I, I mean, I wish I had more advice because... I didn't go through treatment and I didn't even like I tried counseling for like one session and that was an absolute disaster. So I didn't even try that. But like, um, I don't know, like you just have to find something that's worth like find. Oh, this is this. I can't believe I'm saying this because <laughs> this is you, but you have to find your why as to like, why is it important enough to change? And uh, I don't know. I guess it still like doesn't answer your question. No, that's but okay. In the start, you said you had a like the question. You said one of your clients asked you is not what you do, but who you are, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of times we get our identities caught up into what we do, yeah. right? So that's very scary to give up something that is your identity, right? Like, think of how long. Yes. And, well, how long that was your identity, like exercising and limiting your food and paying off all this money really fast and just doing all this, like that. Yeah, that sure was. You attached yourself to that. And I think, honestly, one of the biggest things someone can do is to share their stories as in as many ways as possible because yeah. people listening to this know you know how they're feeling. Right, and if like the first you said you went to a counselor, yeah. you don't necessarily know that they've been through that. Like they might understand all the 
theoretical aspects of it, but it's really impactful to hear someone talk about it who's been through it and who understands it. I think, yes, but also, like, yes, with an asterisk of caution, because I know that, um, like, in, in, in eating disorders specifically, you have to be extremely careful with how you talk about it and who you talk about it with, because even by me talking about it, it can trigger somebody who's been through those things to go back to those ways, even though I'm talking about it in a positive way. Like, if I know, like, when I was still in the midst of it, to hear someone else talk about recovering from anorexia or from an exercise addiction it would just make me, I would be fueled that much more to not recover because I was like... You're beating it. Oh, yeah. I was so tied to it, and I was like, I don't want to be that person. I'm not... I'm not going to gain weight. Like, I don't want to be recovered. And and so, like, I know it, it has to be... Oh, it's just, like, such a tricky thing because... Well, words are impactful, right? Like... Yeah, absolutely. How you say something can affect someone differently. Yeah, right? absolutely. I think... And I think timing is important because I think if, if someone's not... I mean, you have to... Okay, yeah. Timing is important because if someone's not ready to change, like, obviously they're not going to, but that doesn't mean we should just ignore the issue. Like, okay, maybe you haven't accepted that you need to get healthy, but that doesn't mean I'm just going to ignore you and, like, encourage you or be okay with what you're currently doing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense, but it it's just, like, a tricky thing where there's so many things that you think you might be saying that are helpful that are actually harmful to that person who's struggling with it. So it's like you need to f be with them when they're ready and when they're not ready because you can't, you can't for one, let it be and just not address it because that's not good. But you also can't push them to a point of like, because I know that eating disorder mind will be like, I'm going to not eat even more because you're telling me to eat because we want to go against okay I shouldn't say we because I can't lump people in in the same category but I know that the tendency tendency is I'm going to do the exact opposite of what you, you want me to do because we're not we <laughs> because people are driven that way to like stay strong and, and this is like awful but like there is like support groups out there for like people against recovery like stay strong like continue not eating and it's scary to to know that that kind of stuff is out there yeah and i think though that that doesn't mean anyone should ever inhibit themselves from or stop themselves from sharing their story because like i was saying before i would like to think that i helped in some way oh but yeah i'm sure it just it just took like i'm I, you, no one's going to get it perfect. I, I, I'm sure I said some <laughs> really dumb things yeah, that you made did. you go the other way. 100% you did. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's up to the individual. Like, So that's up to you, right? It's up to you to take it. And if I, if the person you're around just stands by and doesn't say anything and is scared to say or wants to say the exact perfect thing, that's never going to happen, right? So Yeah, I think maybe I misinterpreted your question. But yes, you're right in that sharing your story is really important and just talking and it might, about this it might trigger some people like this this you talking about this might actually trigger someone because like you said they don't want to recover and if they hear your story and they're like oh, i beat it right yeah but that shouldn't in stop the person from sharing their story because no. you can't control yeah what and i think do with it. i just like you have to take each situation individually because what works for one person is not necessarily going to work for another person and everybody's journey is different. But I think you're right in that sharing your story is important. Um, well, and the other thing too is not to cut you off there, but someone could hear the same thing today and then next week and it might impact them differently, yeah. right? Um, so to... How is this, you touched on a bit, how is this, let's call it an adventure. I like that idea. Uh, yeah. 
this is definitely it's an adventure <laughs> uh how has this journey this adventure helped you help others oh my goodness uh like in all in every way like i can't i would never have even entertained the idea of doing what i do had i not been through something challenging in the first place because i think it's really hard to be I mean, it's doable, but I think it's really hard to be a good coach when, like, if I was just like, yep, yeah, I've actually been healthy all my life, so I don't have any real personal advice for you. But I think going through hard things where, like, food was completely an addiction, just in the opposite way that most people struggle. But I felt it as an addiction, just like everybody else does. And and not just with, it, with anorexia, but... Throughout recovery, and I'm sure you remember this phase too, like I struggled with binge eating. I would eat till I felt sick and then I would not want to eat for a really long time. And it's all part of that journey of figuring out what's what healthy is again. Mm. And that's such a big struggle because when you accept the fact like, yeah, I need to gain weight. How do you do that properly? And so for a long time, it was like a really hard battle of figuring out what's the difference between eating to gain weight in a healthy way and like binge eating and feeling sick and not not doing it in a healthy way and I just think those things have taught me so much about not just not just food like food's just a portion of it but just the mindset of being healthy both mentally and physically like I can genuinely say I think I can probably relate to anything anybody's gone through well Maybe not everything, but pretty close. Like I've struggled with I've struggled with addiction to certain foods. I've struggled with like I've struggled with sugar. I've struggled with I don't know, anything and everything basically throughout the process of the beginning of my eating disorder to where I am now. I feel like I've covered all the bases. <laughs> and I just think that now I I know how good it feels to have a re- healthy relationship with food again, where I'm just like, I just am so passionate about wanting people to feel the freedom that I feel. And it's like, if I see people struggling, it's like, oh, I just want to help you feel good because I know how much it sucks to be where you are. Mm-hmm. And I know how much it sucks to be controlled by something. And how can, like, please just let me help you be free and like there's just like oh, i'm totally gonna cry again it's only it's okay it's like four times today that's not my record so it's just like there's no better feeling than like being free and knowing that you've overcome something and that you don't have to be controlled by it and i guess you're a competitive person too right so if you can <laughs> swing <laughs> we're laughing right because yeah. she, she's very competitive um if if someone is competitive and you can flip that in them too, is say like to switch it from not wanting to recover to basically winning, w- winning our recovery. <laughs> yeah. right? And even if that's not the best way to do it, at least it starts that journey. And then along the way you start to realize why you want to recover. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess in the beginning, it really doesn't matter what makes you to decide to recover or to get healthy. Like, it, this is not just about eating disorders. This is just health in general. Like, it doesn't matter what makes you get to that point. But getting to that point is like, oh, it's just the best feeling. Mm-hmm. But you have to have a support system along the way or someone to keep you accountable because you are going to have every reason in the book to go back to old ways or to old habits, or there's going to be triggers, and there's going to be things that are going to set you back, and the road to recovery, or the road to health is not a straight road, and it's so important to have support through that, and yeah, I I could talk a long time about that, but it's just Well, I think too, like once you start helping someone (laughs) else, that helps too, right? Like once someone is also accountable to you, in the sense like they're looking for at you not for advice like not like but just someone to talk to right yeah yeah yep yep <laughs> yep, yep. 
<laughs> so like fast forward now, like you have written our local paper. Awesome. Everyone yeah, loves I that. did that when I was going through recovery. That was like very, okay, I'm going to use a word that I don't know if it's proper, but Brianna said it yesterday when I was talking to her on the phone. Brianna's your sister. Oh, Brianna's my sister. My smart, like English teaching sister, but it's very cathartic. Does that sound good? Cathartic for no, me? No, you make like me look <laughs> therapeutic. No, I, don't I know. think <laughs> that's what that means. But <laughs> writing is like, I'll just say therapeutic because I know what that means. It's a very therapeutic process for me of like, I don't want to, I don't necessarily want to talk to someone else about it because I. Like right now. Yeah, I don't talk to you about <laughs> it because I don't really care what you have to say. <laughs> I don't want your opinion. I just want to write my feelings yeah. out and yeah. that helps me process things. And then at the end, it's like, oh, okay. Like, not saying that I always have great things to say, but when I read through things that I've written, it's like, okay, I know that there's other people out there feeling like this, mm -hmm. and maybe somebody needs to read this. Yeah. So, as, I don't know, I feel dumb about it. Like, I feel dumb sharing my <laughs> feelings on paper and or on blogs or whatever it is, but... I know that. I think that prevents a lot of people. I know. From, you know, I just I mean? like, like I just don't want to be like everybody else now that everybody has a blog and everybody, whatever, whatever. And <laughs> this is but sounds I think so once stupid. You switch it. No, but it's just like I, <laughs> I feel like it, some of it is ruined by people who, right? I don't know. Just blog to like get to get things right, or like who just want to be sponsored, so they just write about. Oh, today I woke up and I ate this for breakfast and whatever, whatever, and it's ruined for things that are actually valuable. Right, but I think another part of that too is that shouldn't affect what you want to do, right? Because right? you're, yeah. you're, I care you too want much about what other people. Yeah, think. you want to help people, and then it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing because if your goal is to help others with this, then you're not competing against anyone, right? And Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> and I'm winning. <laughs> and maybe what those <laughs> other people who are blogging about is actually helping someone. You yeah, never know, you're right? right. So you're right. I'm just being whatever. I don't mean to be all like high and mighty and say that, but... Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so I think we'll probably have to have another one of these because you love crying. Uh, yes, I'd love to cry again. I'd love to sniffle on your podcast again because... Also, we should mention at the beginning that I do have a cold, so I sound more nasally than I actually am. The perfect storm. <laughs> Crying it. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Sorry, audience. Um, so I want to finish with some questions here. I thought we just did that. Some, f <laughs> like, not as, I don't think these will, well, maybe they will make you cry. Probably. I don't know. Don't um, be surprised. Name one thing on your bucket list. <gasps> um, well, I want to. I want to bike through Switzerland. There's like these tours, mountain, something, something, Alps, something, something. I know a lot about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the Alps. That's <laughs> yeah. all you need to know. Well, no, that's not even, you can actually even do it through like Spain and Portugal, but I just think we almost got to Switzerland once mm -hmm. and it was like, Oh, I can't even explain it. It was the best thing ever. And I just l also love mountain biking. So I'd love to mountain bike that. I think it's like a seven-day mountain bike tour. But I also would like to bring Duke, and I'm not sure how that would work. So <laughs> Maybe you should, like, because we've mentioned Duke four times now. Duke's my dog. So just give a quick description of Duke. Um, Duke <laughs> is a... Uh, like hundred pound Bernese Husky Shepherd, and he's equally, if not more, stubborn than I am, which is like <laughs> saying a lot. But also, like he's three, but he acts like he's six months old, and he's the best and worst thing that's ever happened. How to many us. times has he punched you in the face? So <laughs> many, like just because he loves you yeah. so much. He doesn't try to be a jerk. He just is naturally a jerk. And he's just, <laughs> like, caused so many problems. But I love him so much for some reason. And I, like, cry thinking about when he dies because that would be so sad. <sighs> yeah. Well, he's my best friend. Yeah. yeah. Besides you. Well, it's uh, a close call. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on this show, the goal is to help people. Yeah. 
we want to help people with bringing experts on and sharing stories like you just did. Ooh, I'm an expert. Right. Yes. An expert in me. In you. Um, if you could give one piece of wisdom or advice that oh. you think could help someone, what would it be? Uh, like with eating disorders anything, specifically? Like anything that you think. Get a coach. Get a coach? Yep. And anything and everything? Yep. Yep. Because I think that... Or like a counselor, a coach or a counselor or someone. Or a mentor, like any of those. Yeah. Like. Well, that, to me, that's the same. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're all interchangeable. But because I feel like sometimes it's just healthy to have someone else professionally telling you what to do. Because like, if, well, you're also my coach, but if you were to tell me what to do, I would not listen. But if I was to like pay somebody else with the title of coach, or mentor or whatever, I would be like, yeah, I'll do whatever you say. Mm -hmm. And it's just like a healthy experience to to admit to needing help with something. Or not even not even if you need help, but just to like help you reach a goal, that's good too. And I think it's healthy to have goals. Yeah, and I think it's important as well, like you said earlier, um, to search those people, or maybe I said it, one of us said it, um, to search out people who actually are doing what they're coaching you to I do, not just understand it, but also either have been through it yeah. or are close to that pain in someone else or um, they're doing it themselves. Yeah. Like I think it's important to have a coach. Like, I think your coach should also be willing to be coached. So, yeah. like, it's important to know that your coach knows that they don't know everything mm -hmm. and I don't care what they're, what they have a coach in. It's just like realizing that I, I see the value in this and I think it's important to, and okay, this is going to sound maybe sales pitchy cause I'm a coach and I think people should hire me cause I think I do a great job at what I do, but I also am willing, like I'm, I also do growth like things that I know are going to make me grow or I see the value in putting money in doing that. And I think that that's important because we can't do it on our own. Yeah. We, we can't to just be your best. Be stagnant. Right? No. We have to grow. You're never going to be your best on your own. Well, I shouldn't say never, but it's really hard. Well, it's seeking out people like you with your story, right? That's going to be impactful for some other people too. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, what is the most positive, positively impactful thing? someone has said mm -hmm. to you or done for you like in life in general yeah oh, i had to pick one thing and just so you know julissa didn't want to know those questions before so she was just on the spot yeah i'm sorry i should have actually known these because i would have actually no it's all good just yeah just choose one thought through it okay the most positively impactful thing anybody's ever said yeah let's just say impactful most impactful thing <sighs> someone's done for you or said to you? <laughs> I don't know. How about let's rephrase this? Um, not I'm the most, but a, at this podcast. a. Okay, I will. I have like, I could list a few things that are completely unrelated. Oh, yeah, it doesn't have to be anything to what you talked about. Well, like, I mean, unrelated to them, to each other. And I don't know why. These are just things that have stuck with me for like ever. And okay, this was like actually not that long ago, but <laughs> somebody at the gym, I was like working out and face to face. Do you know how rare it is for women to give each other compliments face to face? Very. Are you asking me? No, I don't. Okay. Well, it's <laughs> not, it's rare unless you're like best friends. You're like, oh, you look so good today. Anyways. She came up to me and we we're not like we're not, I don't know her. She's someone else's client and she was just like I love your legs. <laughs> and it sounds so stupid, but that has like always been something I'm so self-conscious of and that was like something that I felt like people will never want to be my client or my coach because I feel like they won't want legs like me. <laughs> and she said that to my face and I was just like I don't think you know how how much that means to me. Mm. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that answers. 
Uh, no, nope. sure, we'll go That's with that. That's good. Yep. Wonderful. And then once th- I was probably like, I have no idea how old I was. Back, I was young enough that I still got allowance living at home, and I remember at, it was like Easter time or something, and I think my mom and dad were like trying to teach us about the Bible and <laughs> how like how the principle of forgiveness or whatever and how not or whatever the principle of forgiveness and how when Jesus died for us all our sins are forgiven and then they're like we used to borrow money from mom and dad all the time to buy things like beanie babies <laughs> yes naturally yes yeah. <laughs> and like I don't know dumb things so anyways. I, thought, I thought you were gonna stop there I was like Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Beanie babies. Yeah, no. Beanie babies. Exactly. So then they were like, so we're going to cancel all of your debt to us, just like all of your sins are forgiven. <laughs> and that has always stuck with me. And I'm pretty sure I owed them like $40, but in my mind, that was like the greatest gift anyone had ever given me. Mm-hmm. Also, because I was really money conscious when I was that age, too. So I was yeah. probably like six. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I think that's always stuck with me, like being something that, like, I don't know, forgiveness is important. <laughs> yeah, those are great. Sure, yeah, that's something that we can talk about. <laughs> Thanks, Jalisa. Yeah. These, this has been the great, uh, the great, and a great podcast. Um, be the first guest. Yeah. Be the first, well, second. I'll share a little sh- short one of myself beforehand, but. Um, I think I have a back, uh, just a few, not not more questions. Um, so if you want to follow Jaleesa, and she'd be mad that I did <laughs> this here, um, she is going to start blogging on a website and um, sharing her stories and sharing her adventures as she goes along in this journey, this adventure, right? Um, I'm going on an adventure. Yeah, so we love, I love Lord of the Rings. Julissa pretends that she's watched it. I only dislike saying that line. It. Um, she's going to start <laughs> blogging, create a website. She has an Instagram, Adventures of Matt and Julissa. No, it's a shorthand adventures. It's A-D-V dot Matt and Julissa because Adventures in Matt and Julissa is way too long. I thought you were going to say that was taken. I was like, who took that? Oh, yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, I should let you say. And then... Um, you're also, um, you train some athletes here. You're a group yeah. coach, personal trainer, and you are going to be taking some more online nutrition Oh, clients. yeah. I also have other big plans for what I'm going to do here. Stay tuned for those fun things because it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you want me to like drop my handle? Is I think you just say? did drop your handle. Adventures at. At. Adventure, yeah, no, you ADV because I messed up. Matt. So you, Matt and Jaleesa. uh, no, but like also CrossFit Camera's Instagram, yep, Greater Purpose Nutrition, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's it. Cool, awesome. <laughs> I don't have a YouTube, the I YouTubes, I don't know. I also once was, well, I think that's I was also that. told that I need to know how to do Twitter, but I don't, so I'm not on Twitter. I don't know how to tweet. You but don't have to. Do also, what's that other to. thing that the kids do now? There you go. No, no, you, no. What is the thing? Oh, TikTok. Yeah, I don't have oh, that. Now either. you really, you really <laughs> made us. I'm on. If Snapchat. you would just have left that, no one been like, oh, they don't know what TikTok is. No, I. No, you're right. I don't know. What it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. Okay. Well, thanks, Jaleesa. Yeah. You're welcome. You're awesome. <laughs> you're good too. Well, thanks for joining us as we chatted with Jaleesa and her amazing journey and how she's helping others and how she's going to continue to help people and um, utilize it to make people's lives better as well. If you are interested in any of the services that we provide at Cross the Cameras, um, make sure you head to the show links to check it out. Jaleesa is in charge of our nutrition program. She's a nutrition coach alongside Jocelyn, who is a registered dietitian. We hope to help people through that and uh, give them sustainable eating habits that help them live longer, healthier, fitter lives. 
Um, we have lots of different services inside the gym. We have CrossFit, we have movement resolution, athlete training, um, mom strong with Tiff, lots of different things. So make sure you guys go and check out our website to see if we can help you. And if we can't help you, we'll try to refer you to someone who can. Thanks for tuning in. Check you next time.